Simon, the jobs data out of the US has turned the market negative. Well, the local market it was holding up just a short while ago. We were still a third of a percent higher on the JSE All Share. But certainly the positive momentum has been negated on the international front. It's further volatility and the fact that we're seeing this knee-jerk reaction to any data point coming through, which ultimately shows that the market continues to be very, very skittish. Exactly. And I, th I think the key theme going forward over the next couple of months, particularly as we move into the uh, European or, or, or Northern Hemisphere um, holiday season, will be volatility. We, we saw the news out of China last week with regards to exports, and that propelled markets uh, quite high. Um, and, uh, of course, the news today uh, dragging the market a little bit low. But I think what we will see is that um, the economic data that we have been seeing, the trend is largely for Im improving news. Um, I think if there are any curveballs, it's going to come from the sovereign debt issues uh, emanating out of, of Europe. When you say the, the trend is for improving news, not this week. I mean, you look at housing starts came out negatively yesterday in terms of uh, the market was expecting a better number. FedEx and their outlook was somewhat negative. Uh, and the logistics parcel companies are good barometers of what is happening in the underlying economy. That on top of the jobs data today, do you still maintain that the trend is ultimately positive? Yeah, I think it is. I think we, the, the worst is certainly over. We, we've seen uh, the worst. Uh, I think the, the overall unemployment number was at 10 percent. It's come off its off its highs, and um, um, I, I think it's not about 9.7 percent in yeah, the US. Yeah, so it's, it's slowly moving in, in the uh, right direction. And one joins all the dots from the data points. Uh, the, the trend line is up, and and, and that's a, an important. Uh, Let's look at the local market. Not much in terms of company news flow, but Met Air was profitable for its first half, and it's a South African auto parts manufacturer. It's been boosted by increased demand for vehicles ahead of Soccer 2010. We're now in the middle of that, so possibly not going to see a repeat level of demand once the World Cup is over. And they're relatively cautious on their, their outlook for the second half. Yes, I think you know if, if, if one had to choo choose a sector to avoid being in over the last three years, it, w it would have certainly been in, in manufacturing, particularly uh, components for automobiles. Um, but a surprisingly good update from uh, Met Air, uh, turning from a loss that they reported last time to uh, significant Im improvements. I think they expect earnings for about um, 80 cents for, for the full year. Um, sorry, for, for, for the half year. Um, you know, looking at the business model, um, it's, it's a business that's uh, performed exceptionally w well over time. Um, it's got a fantastic business model, um, although it can be cyclical um, at times. And what uh, contributed to its poor performance uh, over the last two, three years was that it, it geared up for uh, two new ranges. I think it was the Toyota Corolla and the, the new Mercedes um, at exactly the wrong time. Um, so a as they geared up their capacity, um, they didn't get the, the volumes they were hoping for. Uh, they had leveraged their balance sheet, and it all came apart, um, as we saw in their last results. But going forward, looking at the business, I think you know, if one looks at the sort of return on uh, investment that these results are imputing, um, it's about a 15% return on investment. The business um, is capable of a top of the cycle. So from a valuation perspective, does it look attractive for you at these levels? Yeah, I, th I wouldn't be surprised to see, see the share move up 50% over the next two, three years from this level. Northern has increased its capital expenditure at its Boysendal mine by some 16% to 3.6 billion rand. It's a good trend when we start seeing capex across the board increasing. But for Northern specifically, this is one of the, the mid-tier platinum miners out there. And platinum, we've got holding above that $1,500 an ounce level. Yeah, you know, as, as you know, we're very bullish about uh, platinum, the commodity, you know, with reference to... Uh, Norman, uh, Northern, what our feelings there? Essentially, the business is going uh, a, a major change uh, with regards to Boysons. Um, you know, management have come from an arena where they mined a single shaft quite extensively. Um, it was quite an ecologically difficult shaft to, 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 to manage because it uh, tapped into the Marensky Reef. Um, but that was always the problem with that, and, it, and, the, and the valuation rated, uh, rating suffered because it was a single shaft mine that you know prone to accidents. Um, but uh, looking at the business going forward, uh, the market's a little bit unsure on this one. You know, most of the valuation numbers that we are seeing um, you know, put the company at uh, a market perform at this stage, and uh, most people tending to go with uh, 
the, the, the So not necessarily an exciting story on that front. MTN looking at that company closing up three and one third of a percent today, a late rally towards the closing. We're clawing back some ground on MTN at 113 Rand 19. Is this one going to sneak up without people realizing that, that they should have bought it just under that 100 Rand level? Yeah, I think, you know, into that, it, it went to 95 odd uh, Rand. So I think there were, you know, what, what we saw with uh, MTN uh, a couple of months ago, if you have one large player ex exiting uh, the share, because it does um, attract the entrance of the large uh, offshore institutional fund managers, um, and then when they want to sell a share, they essentially just push sell, and uh, within a couple of days, they want to be out the share. So it can, it ha it can have significant downward pressure uh, on the share price. Um, and we were chatting about it last week uh, below 100 Rand, and I, yeah, I mentioned that uh, we found it very attractive at those sort of levels. Um, I still think it's got legs in the valuation. Steinhoff closed at the bottom of the top 40 today, down 2%. Any news flow particular to that retailer? Um, no, nothing specific that I saw. And I think you know, when you have a closeout day, uh, you tend to get share price movements that are uh, completely opposite uh, to, to fundamentals because people might need to close out positions uh, because of their whatever future exposure they, they do have. So prices uh, can be quite uh, strange. Investec PLC, I think we spoke about it last week as well. We're down over 2% at 54 and 72 is, is where we close today. Obviously, sentiment out of the UK continues to buffer the stock. But is it potentially time to pick it up in the hope of better times to come? Yeah, I, I think so. If, if, if you've got a, a short-term view, the share is going to be uh, volatile. Um, it's not the most liquid uh, trading share, but as I mentioned uh, last week, um, if one looks at its returns on its capital over 10 years, uh, they've probably bounced around between uh, 12 and 25 percent, um, and they're sitting at the bottom of that range, and one would expect that uh, there would be mean reversion to, to its uh, long-term trend.